If you are struggling with brokenness, loneliness, or heartache this Christmas season, then consider my next conversation, a divine appointment just for you. Joining me now to share his very inspiring personal story is Chris Collins. Welcome to 100 Huntley Street, Chris. Thank you. We're so thrilled you're with us today, and I know you've been with us before. Yeah. And uh, thankful that you're joining us today during the Christmas season to share your story. Chris, you grew up in a good family, a healthy home, and your mom was a strong follower of Jesus. And at 19, you chose to start going to church yourself. Mm -hmm. What was your understanding of God and Jesus and the church like at that point in your life? Well, I, I grew up spoiled. I was the baby. So I had a bad skew of life that everything was supposed to come to me. And I just, when I came to church at that point, I didn't see Jesus as much as a savior, as a supplement, as Jesus is somebody that comes into your life and makes your life better. Mm. Um, I didn't, you know, per se, I didn't think my life was that bad. I was a pretty decent person and I was a good person. And I just thought if I add Jesus to my life, it would just make my life better. Yeah. Um, just that false belief of, you know, give your life to Jesus and he'll give you a better life. Mm, yeah, so more transactional. Yeah. And yet you start to go, you know, you're serving in church even in the music ministry at that yeah. stage, right? You're yes. very musical and continue to do that. And then you get married. Yes. And uh, things seem to be going along okay, but about five years into that marriage, there are some developments that are, were very, very difficult. Can you share a little bit about that season in your life? Yeah, it just... it things just really started to change. Uh, something happened that uh, caused my wife to just have some struggles and things started, things started to get violent. Um, a lot of anger, a lot of violence, yeah. and uh, she became suicidal. Okay. And uh, there was a couple instances where she tried to take my life. Wow. And... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, you know, experiencing all those different layers there, someone who's uh, struggling with suicidal ideation, struggling with then mental health likely because yes. of that, and also your own experience as a victim of domestic violence then at that stage, yes. as they're starting to go into uh, all the challenges your wife was having. And um, at this stage, what was your under like journey with God like? How were you viewing God? Was that starting to shift? What was happening for you spiritually and emotionally? Again, because I had that false understanding of give your life to Jesus, he'll give you a better life. Okay. I, I really had, it was very selfish and it was very, who I didn't sign up for this. Who signed me up for this? This is not what I yeah. came, to, came to Christ for. This is not, I was promised a better life and I didn't sign up for this. And so my instinct was to just flight and I just ran mm. and I'm like, I'm out. Yeah. And uh, if this is what, being a Christian is, I don't want it. Yes. You know, you you ran, you know, you, I think it sounds like you ran from God. I did. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and also you ran from your wife. I sure did. Yeah. Yeah. And part of that is also the reality that you were experiencing a lot of trauma at yeah. the time. Not expecting these things to happen around you, not expecting these things to happen in your marriage. Um, as you ran, some of the things you ran to, they were meant to numb you out. You were trying to find escapes. What were the things you were running to? Um, I, I drank uh, pornography. Mm. Um, honestly, the day I decided I was out, I, I remember saying to somebody, I'm out, let's find a strip club. Okay. And I was just like, I'm, I'm done. And if this isn't working for me, let's go the opposite way and let's see if that will work for me. And I really tried to numb myself through alcohol, pornography. Mm -hmm. Which is what people do when they're suffering heartbreak, when they're suffering abuse, when they're suffering their own struggles or mental health challenges. Uh, often they do numb out. They try to numb out. They use these things. And yet here you are running, and I know your story, you're running from God, and he's pursuing you even in those strip clubs. You're hearing from yeah. the Holy Spirit. That's so interesting. Will you share a bit about that with our viewers? I'll never forget it. Okay. It still touches my heart today. I remember sitting at a table in a strip club and hearing the gentle voice of the Holy Spirit saying, this is not what I have for you. You shouldn't be here. I have so much more for you. You shouldn't be here. And I knew it was the Holy Spirit because it wasn't a condemning voice. Yeah. It wasn't a voice accusing me, but it was a loving, gentle, it was like the love of a father just saying, it's not what I have for you. Yeah. You shouldn't be here. Yeah. 
I have so much more. It's amazing, Chris. And, you know, I think of the Bible verse, God chastens those he loves. God is pursuing us and limiting us on those things that will destroy us. He's yeah. just calling us gently back. And so you are hearing from the Holy Spirit yeah. in these dark places. Yeah. And, and then God continues to reach out to you. And you find yourself one Christmas morning, uh, you wake up alone. Yeah. And uh, there's a big move here. Something happens. Yeah. It's pretty significant. Yeah, I, I got up and sat on the side of the bed, lonely basement apartment, no tree. And I just said to myself, well, Merry Christmas. Is this the rest of my life? Just sitting alone by myself. And it was uh, probably my lowest moment. And uh, the, fo the following week, that week, I was just very, just in thought, just, and I just remember before going to work the one day, putting my head on the steering wheel and saying, God, I just, I feel like you're just drawing me back. I feel your, your call on me. If, you're, if, if this is you speaking to me, I'm listening. Yeah. And that day, uh, a coworker came to me and said, uh, I've been praying for you all through the Christmas break. I don't know why, don't think me weird, <laughs> but uh, I just want you to have this. And she gave me a note with some scriptures and words of encouragement and a mixtape mm. of uh, worship songs. And it was just, it blew my mind. I drove the city all that night, just listening to that worship tape and yeah. crying. What song, and it's interesting as I listen to your story, um, how you were so musical, you were drawn to the church through music too. You loved the music and here God reaches out to you with this, a cassette tape full of music. Yeah. What were some of the songs that you were listening to on that tape? Uh, the one, even as we're sitting here, the one that I call to mind the most is The Potter's Hand. Okay. That's a beautiful song. Yeah. Beautiful you know, lyrics. And, and, and the one part she sings, you gently call me into your spirit, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. You gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. And I'm sure that spoke to you so deeply, given you were hearing the Holy Spirit in the darkest of places. Yeah. In gentle ways, he was calling yeah. you back. And, uh, and Chris, you came to a point where you chose God again. You, you saw Jesus differently. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. I just had the revelation, the understanding that I'm not good. Mm -hmm. I, I need Jesus to live his life in me. I need a new life. I didn't need him as a supplement. I needed him as a savior. I needed him to come and renew me. And, you know, it's not making a good life better. It's making a dead life live. <laughs> and I just, I needed him to come and bring me to life and just come live his, his life in me. And it was that, that understanding of full surrender. Yeah. It's incredible. And Chris, you, um, you did end up getting remarried and you and your wife, you serve in ministry. Well, you're serving in music ministry uh, at your church. You're serving on the board. It's 23 years have gone by and God has done so much. You have a full family life. I'm sure there's no more Christmases where you're waking up alone. No, no. God is faithful. God, God is, is so faithful. faithful. You know, Chris, for that person watching right now who might be saying, um, so much has happened to me. I've done so much. I'm so broken. What can God do in my situation? And here I am at Christmas. What would you say to them? I would say God is there. You know, the scripture I'm thinking right now is I would never leave you and I will never forsake you. And in those darkest moments when you think you're alone, he's still there and he loves you so much and he wants to be a part of your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, Chris, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Thank you for being so vulnerable and honest about the work God has done in your life. And we're so thrilled that we uh, could have this time with you. Thank you. Well, you know, if what you've heard in these moments has resonated or hit your heart, can I tell you it's a personal invitation to you from God who loves you so much to receive his love this Christmas. No matter what has happened, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, know that God is pursuing you and he loves you. And it's a moment of just saying, Jesus, yes. Jesus, I will accept you into my life and I will try you. I've tried everything else. It's time to try Jesus. If you want to continue to pray with someone right now, please call our prayer partners, 1-866-273-4444. You can even email prayer at crossroads.ca. 
Today is your day to say yes to Jesus and say yes to all the things God has in store for you, no matter how dark things look. God is with you and he's calling you out of that darkness. Well, for a word of encouragement, over to you, Joe.